We grew up in a small town outside of Elmira, New York. Had two brothers, uh, three boys, so very active household. My parents met during college. I think they were two souls that were meant to be together. They were very important part of my, my kids' uh, upbringing. My favorite memory was always at their house in um, South Carolina. Right before we'd go to the beach, I'd always play their big grand piano. And so my grandparents would like, they'd show me how to play it. Just the way they made us feel like it was our second home. My father started having health issues after they kind of moved to South Carolina, um, which was their retirement plan. Um, he was 35 years as a neurologist. But he started having kidney failure um, and turns out he had kidney disease as well. When my father got sick, my mother jumped right in and did what she had to do. One night, my father um, fell out of bed and fortunately, my brother Ben was in town. So we got him to Highland Hospital uh, where he was admitted and uh, he had broken his hip. Surgery was not an option at that point. So uh, that's where we met Dr. Ching and just upon meeting her and having a five minute conversation with her kind of put everyone at ease. My team was called to help consult um, in Dr. Cummins' care, uh, help the family make decisions about next steps, and also help with really um, complex pain management for him. It was very clear from the beginning that they're a very loving family and they cared very much about what happened next. I think at the end of the day, they knew in their hearts that end of life care was really the best uh, option for Dr. Cummins. Um, they just needed someone to validate that feeling. Dr. Ching, I think, came into this fold in a way to say, you're still in charge, Jim. You still make this decision. It gave Jim permission to let go without feeling like he was letting go. Palliative care and hospice are uh, similar in many ways. They share the same philosophy of care in attempting to optimize quality of life for patients who are seriously ill. We think of hospice care as palliative care for patients who are specifically nearing the end of life. My father's last few days at the hospital, we had a lot of family in at the time. In the way that the palliative care team handled that was just beautiful. And they gave him a home feeling in the safety of a hospital. During that time when my grandfather was getting more sick, all the nurses, like we were coming in so much that they started to like know us. So they kind of felt like a second family almost, like the way they treated us as their own kids. Letting me go in and just kind of like say what I needed to say to him was so important to me. It mattered a lot. She had had a cough for a little while and we brought her in to get that checked out. And we ended up getting a biopsy done and she ended up being diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer, which blew us all away. I mean, weeks prior she was pushing him in a wheelchair and she was lifting him in and out of wheelchairs, in and out of the car. Our whole world is turned upside down and where do we go from here? And it was scary. Our sister-in-law, Anjali, is a hematologist oncologist in um, San Diego. It's hard because Andy and Anjali geographically can't possibly be here. Anjali was on the phone with Dr. Ching. Andy was on the phone with Dr. Ching. We're so appreciative that the team here would collaborate with them. I kind of knew at that moment that this family really needed my team um, because I think we all knew that they were about to lose two very important people in the family in a short period of time. Over the next few months, even after Dr. Cummins passed away, uh, Mrs. Cummins was admitted to Highland Hospital um, due to complications from her cancer and from cancer treatment. When she was discharged from the hospital, she was seen in our outpatient clinic by Michelle Sturman our physician's assistant. I chose to specialize in palliative care because I've known the impact that palliative care can make on patients as well as their families. Michelle Sturman was a huge part of the process as well. Um, she and my brother Ben worked closely in terms of coming up with a plan. At that point, Sharon had decided that she wanted to focus more on um, comfort and quality of life as her priority. I think in terms of Sharon helping to improve her her pain and her symptoms so that she could do the things she wanted like bake cookies with her granddaughter and spend time with her children. So having those symptoms well controlled helped to enable that to occur. It was just amazing like getting to have that time with her near the end of her life was so special to me and it's gonna be one of my favorite memories. Our whole family and my brothers understand more about hospice care and, and what it means for the patient 
it was important to them to be able to say goodbye in that way, and Highland gave us the space to do that. So we chose Highland Hospital for a few reasons. We had our four children there uh, and had wonderful experiences. When it's the most wonderful time in your life, which is when we had our kids there, to the hardest time in our life, saying goodbye to your parents, we had that same level of love and care. There was no question for us that Highland was where we wanted to be. Those of us who call palliative care a calling, um, we do this because we recognize that whether we show up to work or not, death and dying and sadness happens every day. But we know that if we do show up to work and we come to work and we're able to help families, that we're able to show people that how someone dies is just as important as how someone lived. And so it's so critical for us to have a space dedicated to have these very private, very intimate conversations. Having a dedicated unit allows us to have trained staff who recognize that when someone is at the end of life, they need more care. Making a decision to, to get on board with palliative care, I think after a five minute conversation with Dr. Ching would put anyone's mind at ease. It's a connection that will never be broken now. I will you know, think of her always as a person that came to us in what was perhaps the hardest part of our lives. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you to the entire team.